Hello folks, so this is 2019 Majin paper 2-2 and the question number is 4 and it belongs to the chapter uh, waves. Uh, so this, I have a deal with this question because uh, one of my students uh, uh, brought into a uh, certain factor here which I found it uh, pretty tricky when you first item the questions. So uh, that's why I am addressing this question. So um, the tricky person is in uh, C2 actually. So the first uh, page goes just as normal. And it's only the in the second page that uh, this thing will start. So the first thing says, uh, for a progressive water wave, state what is meant by uh, displacement. So it is the distance uh, uh, distance covered by a uh, particle, distance uh, of the particle at the moment uh, from the equilibrium point. So if we have a wave like this, like this, so the right now the particle here has displacement like this, 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 and so on. Now next is amplitude, so it is the maximum displacement possible on either side, either this side or that side, this side or that side. Number B, two coherent waves say X and Y meet at a point and superpose. The phase uh, difference uh, between the waves at the point is 180 degree, so that is destructive, destructive here. Wave X has an amplitude of 1.2 centimeter, so we have got AX is equal to 1.2 centimeter. Wave Y has an amplitude of 3.6 cm, so this is AY is equal to 3.6 cm. And uh, the intensity of this thing is uh, I, I. Uh, so we have to find uh, the, we have to find the uh, expression for the resultant intensity, intensity in terms of I, in terms of I. So let us say I resultant by I is equal to what? So one thing that we have to remember is uh, during superposition, what happens is the I resultant there, there is equal to, uh, it is a 3.6 minus 1.2 centimeter, 1.2 centimeter because it is destructive interference and that's why uh, the displacement of the particle will be the resultant of these two and this thing will be opposite to this so that's why it is minus. So this becomes 2.4 centimeter. So this thing should be equal to, equal to, uh, is equal, so this is A resultant, A resultant should be equal to k a resultant square divided some constant a this i is equal to a x square so this is equal to k is there k cancels out this square is equal to 2.4 square divided a x square equal to 1.2 square so this will be equal to uh, 2 square equal to 4 so the ratio is equal to so this gives us this gives us i resultant is equal to 4 i so it's equal to 4 into i so it is 4 times then number c1 monochromatic light is instant on diffraction grating describe the diffraction of the light waves as they pass through grating so so they pass through the slits uh, the numerous slits of the grating here yeah? numerous slits uncountable number of slits and uh, then uh, what happens is they spread so if we have got to uh, the gratings like this, the, the slits like this. So we pass light like this, light like this. So what I mean is, they can spread throughout this region. They can spread throughout this region, but what happens is, uh, the maximum occurs at very few places. For example, here, 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 and here. Till 90 degree, uh, we can have only uh, a maximum about a dozen, about a dozen, instead of uh, numerous that we expect in interference. So that's how diffraction here occurs through the grating. And because of that, uh, the light density of all of these will, things will be going, going here. The light density of all of these things will be going here. So that's why these are extremely bright. Dark, bright, dark, bright, and so on. So now, the main thing, the main thing that I wanted to deal with in this question is in this number. In this number. So it says that, it says that a parallel beam of uh, light consists of two wavelengths 540 nanometer and uh, 630 nanometer so they are of different colors the light is insane normally on a grating of course third order diffraction maxima are produced for each of the two wavelengths so uh, third order diffraction possible for both of them and there's no higher order so we have to find the smallest possible line spacing of the diffraction grating for this to happen for this to happen so third order produced but not the larger one. So one thing that we have to remember is the equation for the spacing of the uh, crystals, the angle there 
and uh, the order and the lambda is somewhat like this. So that means uh, that means uh, as we increase the order, increase the order, uh, somewhere the angle will be theta, the angle theta will be 90, after which uh, no grating will be formed. So, so, <coughs> so in this case, so theta will be uh, will be 90, uh, 90 earlier if uh, earlier if lambda is more. So theta will be 90. Uh, the, the possibility of negative angle is more if lambda is more. So that means among these two things, only this thing counts in our calculation. This thing doesn't count. So because we have the high wavelength here, so high wavelength will be reaching theta 90 for even lesser num lesser order of the waves. So this thing doesn't come to calculation and only this thing. So with that, now what I can do is, with that, so we have to find the smallest line spacing. So this D is equal to equal to n lambda by sine theta sine theta equal to uh, n is a 3 here 3 here and uh, lambda is equal to 630 so 630 into 10 power minus 9 and then 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 uh, this the value of sine theta is equal to sine 90 degree which is 1 so this is the value of this is d here so it should be equal to it should be equal to uh, 3 3s are 9, 3 6s are 18, 0 into 10 to the power minus 9 should so be equal to 1.89 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters. So the value of D is equal to 1.89 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters. So we are using this because this will give uh, this will give 90 degree uh, earlier than this thing. So after that we calculate this uh, D here. So minimum displacing happens at the highest angle. That's why we apply the equation and get this. So this is where people uh, have been stuck. Maybe it's because of not understanding the language or something like that. So they simply didn't understand the maxim. And many people uh, asked, with, asked with me. So that's why I'm addressing this question. Now, the beam of light in C2 is replaced by a beam of blue light incident on the same gritting. So let me explain whether a third order spec diffraction maximum is possible or not. So in this case, let us again go for this equation theta equal to 3 lambda so we have to find whether this thing is possible or not so if blue light is used what happens here is if i go through this range here v i b g y o r so in case of r here lambda is high lambda is high and here lambda is less now we have 630 nanometer it is almost red or in between orange 540 is around um, green or yellow green or yellow uh, let's say ye yellowish actually uh, yellowish let us say between green or yellow i, I can also say, say that or yellow would be better because uh, uh, since color is continuous we can we cannot actually actually distinguish where uh, something ends so if we use blue lambda is less so if we use blue lambda is less so that means theta will be less theta will be less so here uh, theta will be less than in this case that's why third order is easily formed so theta less means that third order will be uh, less than that of this thing so third order is formed maybe fourth is also formed who knows but third order is definitely possible